Robert Skinner. Yes, speaking. Hello. That's fine. This is from Glen Mackin Church. Glen Glen Mackin Church of God. Yes. Yes. Hello. Yes. Um, I was I I was looking online. Yes. Um, I'm curious about the baptismal formula. If it's possible to help, is it true that you have a different formula to the other churches, or have I got we have right? a biblical formula? Uh, right. Uh, it's uh, in the name of Jesus they're baptized. If you actually look uh, at the original, which is quite easy to find on the internet, the original uh, verse from Matthew 28. Actually, Jesus didn't say in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He said in my name. Now, this is, I mean, if you can't find it... Uh, um, could you could you name the codex or the papyri? The papyri are numbered P so-and-so, like P66 is one of the earliest, or P200 is another early one. The codex would be like Codex Vaticanus or Codex Sinaiticus. Yeah. Could you name the papyrus or the or the manuscript? No, I couldn't because it's all I have it all down. What I'm going to say to you there is, I can send you quotes from uh, different scholars and different other churches, which verify this. Even churches that do baptize in the Trinity. Uh, I mean, all I would need your email address, and I can send you this information. Uh, but uh, we baptize. Uh, there, there's also a very good book, actually, which explains it. Which, uh, if you send us an email, obviously now I'm heading into a meeting very shortly, but I didn't want to not ring you. Uh, if you, Thank you ring us later on and leave us your email address or your personal address, um, I will post this to you. I can uh, I can speak on the phone. Yes, I can certainly speak on the phone. That that would that would be convenient. Um, for instance, when you look at Acts two thirty eight. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It then goes on, and it, it says in verse 41, Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. They would have gone, gone to the pool of Siloam. Yeah. Um, that would be the only place for a large body of water in, in Jerusalem for so many people to be to be baptized. Acts 2.38 is a dry verse. There's no baptisms in Acts 2.38. It's just commanding people to be baptized surely upon the authority of Christ. Well, actually what they said was, you know, in Jesus' name, and any time they did baptize in the uh, New uh, Testament... Well, 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 where? Where did they say in Acts 2.38 to be baptized in Jesus' name? It says... Let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, is that not Jesus' name? What is the name of Jesus Christ? Yeah, but what I'm saying is, it says Jesus Christ in Acts 2. It says Lord Jesus in Acts 8. It says Lord in Acts 10 and Lord Jesus in Acts 19. And the prepositions differ. I think there's a little bit of difference between the Nestle's text and the Textus Receptus and the Horton Westcott text. Uh, so, uh, but, 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 it's N, the name, in Acts 2 and Acts 10, and it's Ice, the name, in Acts 8 and Acts 19. So not only do the wordings differ, baptised in the name, Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus, Lord and Lord Jesus, Acts 2, 8, 10 and 19, but, but the prepositions differ also. Don't you think that's, a, that's possibly a reference to the authority for baptism? Well, the authority for baptism is in the command of Jesus. It wasn't optional. They told him to go and do the baptism in, in his name. Uh, and again, what did they do? They obeyed his command, uh, which was baptized in his name. Nowhere does it intimate, in my opinion, that they baptized in the Trinity. In it, fact, it does. It, it, it does. Church, well, church yes. history would say that they, they, this only came about in the third session. Uh, Third century. Um, it it, well, it, doesn't, it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't. But look, I'm not. You know, see, my attitude on things is what we see in the Bible, we're comfortable with. What you see in the Bible, you're comfortable with. And at the end of the day, 
doctrine does not save. I don't believe that because we baptize in Jesus' name, we're not Christians, or because you baptize in Jesus' name, you're not a Christian. I never, uh, I never said that. No, you, no, you you're don't, saying an awful lot very quickly, and I can't take it in, and I can't respond. Could we speak again when perhaps you've got more time? Look, I mean, I would love to, Ben, really, uh, coming up at the moment, you know, as ministers, we're busy with church, we're busy with people in hospital. I'm quite prepared to send you documentation, even by email or by mail, if you give me your address, of what we teach, what we believe. Okay. Uh, okay, and, have you got a pen? I don't, I don't argue with anyone. I accept that we can agree to disagree as long okay. as we both know it's only because of the Lord Jesus Christ we're saved and his sacrifice could, could on you the speak cross. Sl- could you speak slowly to me because I am dyslexic and I'm going to have trouble okay, taking no it. Problem. Well, do, you, do you have a pen to take down my address? Yes, I have. Hold on a second. What I'm saying is that we both agree that salvation is only found in the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross then we're brothers in Christ everything else I don't think we're going to get banned uh, from the kingdom of God because we disagree with each other and other doctrinal matters so your, your name is Robert Skinner yes hold on Robert Robert spelt S-K-Y-N-N-E-R oh right S-K-Y-N-N-E-R and your address Robert it's- That's grand. I'll forward that to you as soon as I can, yes. Robert. Don't you think you and possibly misunderstood a, a piece of obvious biblical shorthand? For instance, no. the, the, the numbers blessing formula of, of numbers 6, 24 and 20, 25 and 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance and give you peace. That was to be commanded to be repeated throughout the Old Testament. Shama. Pardon? Is it not called something like the Shama? The no. Jews repeat that all the time. The Lord our God is one Lord. No, that's a and that's the, yeah. that's a different. Yeah, it's from that. Different, it's from that chapter. Go ahead. Slower, yeah. slower, slower, please. That's a different. That's a different context. Different chapter. I'm yeah. talking about the numbers blessing formula. The threefold numbers no, blessing right. formula. Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make His face shine upon you. Lord lift up His countenance upon you. That's repeated throughout the Old Testament, but when it's used. It's referred to in a kind of biblical shorthand. So it's used in Deuteronomy 10, 8. At that time, the Lord separated the tribe of Levi to bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord, to minister to him, and to bless in his name to this day. To bless in his name. That's a shorthand way of referring to the full Aaronic blessing formula. Um, There's lots of things like that in our society. LOL. I formed a YouTube channel, LOL. Okay, LOL doesn't mean LOL. LOL is a shorthand way of meaning laughing out loud. The YouTube page I founded was about Jehovah's Witnesses. LOL at Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, I got an invitation to a party once and it said RSVP. RSVP is French for Respondez-vous s'il vous plaît. So RSVP is a shorthand way of referring to the full invitation. I'll, I'll give you another example, Deuteronomy 21.5. Then the priests, the sons of Levi, shall come near, for the Lord your God has chosen them to minister to him and to bless in the name of the Lord. So to bless in the name of the Lord or to bless in his name is a re- shorthand reference to the Aaronic blessing formula, which was used throughout the Old Testament. It's just never repeated verbatim. And the same thing happens, exactly the same thing happens in the book of Acts, the four passages you, you would allude to, Acts 2, 8, 10, and 19, are simply biblical shorthand referring back to Matthew 28, 19. And there's no historical document that says that um, uh, Matthew 28, 19 read, read differently, but if you can give me a, well, a I reference. Well, I can send that information, you can sure. look up. But look, Robert, unfortunately, uh, as you know, we're fairly busy here, so okay. I'll get that off as soon as I can. Okay, can, we, can we speak again? Because I'd like to know why oneness deny the divinity of the Son of God and teach a creator's son. Because that is a salvation issue. If you're a subordinationist who believes the Father is God and the Son is deity, you ain't a Christian. Can we talk again about that some other time? Yeah, well, we'll get an opportunity. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Right, b- bye, b- bye-bye, sir. Bye. Um... 
There is, and I could add very briefly, if we go on to the Didache, which is a, a church history document from the late 1st or early 2nd century, in section 2 it deals with baptism, and it repeats verbatim the threefold baptismal formula of Matthew 28, 19, from the late 1st or early 2nd century, in the Didache section 2. You, you can see it on the screen before you. But then later on in section 2, it goes on to state that people had been baptised in the name of the Lord. And you'll find the same sort of use of the phrase, in the name of the Lord, used in the Church Fathers. Now, Oneness Pentecostals have no scholars. They are Pentecostal people. They started in 1913 in Azoro Seco in California. I think the guy who started it was John Shep. There was an all-night Pentecostal camp meeting, and he, he, he ran through the camp in the morning, having studied the Bible all night, and he said, baptism is in the name of Jesus. And from then, one as Pentecostals uh, arose shortly after that, because they reasoned, well, if the baptismal formula is Jesus Christ, that would mean that Jesus is the name of the Father, Jesus is the name of the Son, Jesus is the name of the Holy Spirit. There is no Trinity, there's just Jesus. That took a couple of years to develop. Um, originally, they were regarded as modalists. That's changed over time. Today, they're more Nestorians and adoptionists. Nestorians are, well, let, me, let me start with modalists. Modalists are people who used to teach in the early years of the Christian church that there's one God and he's one person, so he, he's the father in the Old Testament. Then he comes to this world as Jesus. How they would explain Jesus praying to the Father is difficult. In, for instance, John 17, 1, when he prays to the Father, where the Father speaks to the Son, this is my beloved Son at the baptism. Uh, and then later on, um, from Pentecost onwards, God comes to us as the Holy Spirit. That's the traditional oneness belief. We don't have their creeds, unfortunately. It's very sad they've been destroyed. But my very strong guess would be that like the modern oneness movement, they rapidly evolved over time. And the direction the modern oneness churches are going in isn't that direction because they believe that God can exist simultaneously as the Father, as the Holy Spirit in Jesus' baptism and as the flesh in Jesus' baptism. But the direction the modern oneness movement is going in would be um, Nestorianism. They believe really in two Jesuses. There's one Jesus who's Jesus the man and another Jesus, Jesus the God. And Jesus the man who's called the son prays to Jesus the God who's the father. And they're also adoptionists with a little twist. Adoptionists were people who believe that um, Jesus was born a man. He wasn't God when he was born. But adoptionists would say that at his baptism, um, he, he became God when God indwelt him. So he was adopted into the Godhead at his baptism. Some modern oneness Pentecostals seem to be teaching something similar to that, especially at Colossians chapter 2 verse 9, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. They believe that, um, uh, please forgive me if I'm not speaking very cogently, but I'm not very well at the moment. And my sleeping patterns are, are right off. Uh, I had to give blood at the doctor yesterday, so I'm waiting for the results. Um, the adoptionist belief used today by many oneness Pentecostals is different. They believe that Jesus was adopted at his birth. But what they mean by that is that the Son is the flesh and the Father is the deity who indwells him. So when the, when the Father indwells the Son, that makes Jesus God. If the Father leaves the Son, then Jesus the Son is just a, a hunk of flesh. Um, obviously that's subordinationism. That's utter blasphemy. The Bible says very clearly we're to honour the Son just as we honour the Father, John, John 5.23. And John 8, 24, it's the Son who's speaking there because the speaker's identified as the Son of Man in verse 28. And so the Son says, 
in John 8, 24, if you don't believe I am, you're going to die in your sins. That's an allusion to the one who Moses saw at the burning bush. And Moses said, what, who are you? What is your name? And the one at the burning bush, that's the son, said, I am that I am. And Jesus alludes to that in John 8, 24. Oneness Pentecostals often use that verse against Trinitarians. They say, if you don't believe Jesus is the father, you'll die in your sins. Because they believe the speaker there is Jesus, who's the father. And so it's a salvation issue that you believe that Jesus is the Father in oneness theology. But John 8, 24 is speaking of the Son. Um, very briefly, I'll, I'll, I'll show you where the Trinitarian baptismal formula is alluded to in Acts 19. Acts 19, 1, and it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. And finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. Now, listen what Paul then does. He refers to baptism. If the baptismal formula is Lord Jesus Christ, Paul's question doesn't make any sense. If the baptismal formula, or even, I'd concede, baptism into the authority of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is how baptism was done, then this does make sense, because Paul asks him about how they were baptised. Acts 19.3, and he said to them, into what then were you baptised? So they said, into John's baptism. So Paul meets disciples of John. He says, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? No, because they were disciples of John. And he said to them, and they said to him, to Paul, we have not so much heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he, Paul, said to them, into what then were you baptised? So obviously, whatever the baptismal formula or the authority for baptism is, it contains the words Holy Spirit. Think of the implication of these oneness beliefs. Most of them, most of them are dishonest. Most of them won't tell you what they really believe. Um, they used to, they used to be straight off the bat, tell you straight, if you're a Trinitarian, you're going to burn in hell. You're going straight to hell. Only oneness people, Pentecostals are saved. Today in 2023, they're devious. They're liars and they're devious. They will say one thing to one person, if they're speaking to a Methodist or a, a Baptist pastor. Oh, brother. Hello, brother. Yes, brother. Oh, we're fellow Christians, brother. When they're speaking to um, uh, a pretty inexperienced, maybe a young person in a Baptist or a, or a Methodist church, they'll tell them straight, if you're not baptized in Jesus' name, you're going to burn in hell. You're going to go straight to hell. So they say different things to different people. This is something that I, 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 I wrote, and I'll finish with this. Why do so many oneness Pentecostal sects damn other oneness Pentecostals to hell on the basis that they have been not baptised the correct way? The mainland Chinese-based True Jesus Church, they do have branches all over the world. They've got about five or six in Britain who I've spoken to, and also uh, branches in um, America. But there are many, many millions in China. I don't think anyone knows how large they are. The mainland Chinese-based True Jesus Church, which is possibly the largest one of sex, sect, insists that the chin must rest upon the chest at the moment of baptism in Jesus' name. And so it damns to hell as unsaved millions of other apostolics who've been baptized in Jesus' name. Isn't that interesting? Other smaller oneness sects insist that reciting the baptismal formula in English is invalid because the Bible's written in Greek. But Jesus would have spoken Aramaic. And so they use either an Aramaic or a Hebrew form of words, but not being educated, because there's no scholars amongst them. As they don't even speak these ancient languages, they argue between themselves as to how to pronounce the name of Jesus in Aramaic or in Hebrew. Is it Yahoshua or Yehoshua or Yahashua? So there's different one sex with different formulas rebaptizing people into the correct name. And um, of course, United Pentecostal Church, Bible Way, which I used to be connected with, Pentecostal Assemblies of the World, who use the English formula, they tend to lose people to these um, sacred name groups, some of whom are Sabbath keeping groups. I, I use that tongue in cheek because no one's a Sabbath keeper today who who thinks you've got to go to a building on a Saturday. But um, this is the problem with oneness. And so all of these groups, 
but particularly the true Jesus church, which is adamant that if you're not baptized by them with the chin resting on the chest, you're going to burn in hell forever. They damn other oneness sex to hell. Now, think about this logically. The guy who invented baptism in Jesus' name, it came about in 1913. They, they weren't teaching this in the 16th century or the 15th century or the 10th century. The only arguments uh, about the baptismal formula were from 1913 onwards, where a group of people with no scholarship, no biblical teaching, but are Americans, and there are many fine American scholars, please, I'm not deriding Americans, many, some of the best scholars in the world are Americans. But also, sadly, in America, there are various sects and groups in America who are not educated and who apply crass literalism. This is one of the big banes, the big problem with American theology. Some of it's brilliant at the scholarly level, but at the, the street level, it's appalling because you've got people who are kept dumb by uh, taking that Bible literally. And of course, the people who tell them what literal means would be their church leaders. So one group of literalists will tell their followers, um, you can deal with the same passage and look at three different groups. And they'll all say you've got to take the Bible literally and they'll all come to completely different understandings as to what those literal meanings mean. But think of, the, think of this logically to the bitter end. According to almost all oneness Pentecostals today, everyone of note in church history, from St. Augustine, Tertullian, Huss, Wycliffe, Luther, Tyndale, Wesley, Whitfield, Spurgeon, Gladys Aylward, the missionary to China, they're all lost and burning in hell because they weren't baptized the right way. This is a, a, a crazy belief. And I believe, I can't be certain about this, but I believe that John Shep, who invented um, this baptism in Jesus' name, he always remained a Trinitarian. He never converted to the oneness belief. And he was the founder of baptism in Jesus' name. This is a lunatic belief, a crazy belief. And as you can see from this um, pastor, who spoke very quickly and had to go to a meeting, um, they're only looking for the gullible. Honestly, they're really, this is a, a group that looks for people like Jehovah's Witnesses at the bottom of the barrel, looking for people who are dumb, they don't question anything, they just pay their tithe, and they don't question the pastor.